When it comes to fasting, how long do you need to fast to induce levels of autophagy, support longevity, and decrease inflammation? Well, a recently published study in 25 individuals found that just 30 days of Ramadan fasting, that is fasting for 17 to 19 hours per day, led to significant improvements in levels of autophagy. And I think this is the most important finding of the study, an increase in a tumor suppressor protein known as P53. We're going to talk more about that today. And changes in cellular senescence. We know that aged cells become senescent. They release this senescence associated associated secretory phenotype, which recruit other cells to become sort of malevolent and, and release inflammatory biomarkers. So what this study found is just 30 days, one month, and it's not hard, 17 to 19 hours of fasting led to all these significant improvements that support longevity, metabolic health, and aging. So let's talk more about this. I think the study is quite fascinating. Uh, the title here is The Effect of Prolonged Intermittent Fasting on Autophagy, Inflammasome, and Senescent Gene Expressions, an Exploratory Study in Human Young Males. So investigators in Germany say, in conclusion, we demonstrate in apparently healthy males who engage in a one-month Ramadan fasting that prolonged intermittent fasting may induce autophagy, reduce inflammatory cytokine known as TNF-alpha and reduced senescent markers. Prolonged IF upregulates the expression of NLRP3, interleukin-1-beta, but not this inflammasome ASC element. And also, our study exhibits dynamic changes in autophagy, inflammation, and how senescence expression at time point manner and how these genes might play a role in the expression of other pathways. They say further studies are warranted to understand how intermittent fasting influences these genes and how every gene affects every other. But since our study was conducted in normal, healthy adults, future cohort studies are needed to elucidate how intermittent fasting affects overall lifespan and the incidence of diseases in all sorts of different people. Essentially, what these investigators did is they looked at different inflammasome and autophagy-related biomarkers one week before the fasting protocol, two weeks after the fasting protocol started, at the end of the fasting, that is the 30-day fasting protocol, and one week after fasting ended. And as you can see on this image, this is figure six here, you see autophagy significantly increases throughout the month. You also see levels of the inflammasome. The inflammasome is basically an inflammatory hub that when activated will release nuclear nuclear factor kappa beta and interleukin-6 and all the bad inflammatory cytokines. So you see favorable changes within this inflammasome hub and a decrease in the NLRP3, which is the activator of this inflammasome hub over time. And also you see a decrease overall in senescence-associated signaling molecules. Now, I, I know senescence is kind of a big word. I sort of defined it earlier, but essentially senescent cells are aged. They should apoptose and die, but they don't. And the problem with senescent cells is when they accumulate, they recruit other normal cells to behave like senescent cells. And so if you can purge these cells with exercise or potentially intermittent fasting, you can expect to age more gracefully. So let's get into P53. I think this is quite fascinating. This is the tumor suppressor protein known as P53. And I want to share with you why this is so important because it helps repair DNA damage that might initiate the onset of a tumor or formation of cancer. But before we do, as always, friends, I just want to thank you for being here. As always, I'm grateful for your comments, your likes, your shares. If you're enjoying this video, please share this as a text message with a friend so that they can get access to this cutting edge information and help to modify their lifestyle. Start to make intermittent fasting a lifestyle, not just something that they do once a year. Now, if you're looking for a way to accelerate your fast, we've created the Berberine Fasting Accelerator over at Myoscience. This is a great tool to help kickstart your fast. Remember, time point zero of fasting is after your last meal. So if you want to accelerate the metabolic physiology that is, that is linked with fasting, try taking the Berberine Fasting Accelerator two to three capsules around dinner time or shortly after your last meal. You can test this with a ketone meter. It will increase your ketones. It starts to kickstart your fast. And it might also help curb those evening food cravings for cookies, ice creams, and sweets that can derail your body composition goals and your metabolic health. You can save over at myoscience.com. That's M-Y-O-X-C-I-E-N-C-E.com, myoscience.com. Check out the Berberine Fasting Accelerator. Use the code PODCAST to save. So what's the big deal about this tumor suppressor protein P53? Well, we know that cancer is the second leading cause of preventable death. We know that close to 600,000 people die from cancer every year. And when a study finds that Fasting, just Ramadan fasting, not doing anything extensive or aggressive, 17 to 19 hours fasting for just 30 days can significantly increase the genetic expression that will increase P53. 
So we know P53 is a stress response transcription factor that can induce cell cycle arrest. By activating P53, it can lead to several cellular changes such as DNA repair, prevention of senescence, and apoptosis, contributing to reduced atherogenic risk and the total number of atherogenic particles as well. So it also plays a role in metabolic health and LDL oxidation. So as you can see with figure five, you see a significant increase in P53 at time point three, which was just after 30 days of the intermittent fasting protocol. Again, 17 to 19 hours per day of no food, feeding between a six and seven hour window. So I think that is the most exciting because we know that cardiovascular disease is the number one cause of mortality. We know that P53 is involved in lipoprotein metabolism and the formation of metabolic health and also helping to prevent DNA damage. And this is particularly important for people who have an occupation that is linked potentially with increased rates of DNA damage, shift workers, people who work the graveyard shift, people who are x-ray or radiology uh, techs or uh, doctors and things like that. And even flight attendants with ionizing radiation, fasting could be a nice way to mitigate the potential risks of your occupation. Now, for a lot of people, myself included, I'm interested in enhancing autophagy. We know autophagy has tissue-specific benefits, uh, particularly in the liver, uh, in the brain, decreasing the formation of protein adducts in the brain and fat in the liver. Well, there's good news. Just regular intermittent fasting increases autophagy initiation proteins. And so that's what you're seeing here in figure three. You see the messenger RNA expression of what's known as ATG5. There's, I think, 17 different autophagy-related genes, ATG1, ATG2, ATG5. And what you see here is after 30 days of regular intermittent fasting, remember, this is not a seven-day fast, a 14-day fast. This is just something that is attainable for most people. Not eating for 17 hours a day is achievable for a lot of you. Well, guess what? There is a more than two-fold expression in the autophagy initiation proteins and the autophagy inhibitor protein as well, which is known as the uh, ULK1. And so, Again, we see it from both sides. The inhibition of autophagy is reduced and the enhancement of autophagy is expressed just with consistent intermittent fasting. And I think that's the take home here because people are like, well, I want to enhance autophagy. So therefore I need to fast for two weeks or I need to do a five day fast. Well, not according to the literature in this study. Again, this was a, a unique study. There's only been one other related study in June of 2019 that found when people uh, do a 16-8 fast paired with exercise, there was a significant increase in the messenger RNA that enhanced autophagy. And now we have this study as well. So we have several studies that confirm this. And I will mention that people who regularly exercise generally have a greater increase in fasting associated autophagy initiation proteins like HEG5. So if you're trying to even get more from your regular intermittent fast, whether it's 16, eight or 17 hours a day or what, what have you, if you also exercise, you will induce these autophagy associated initiation proteins more readily. One study looked at a 36 hour fast in sedentary overweight people versus fit healthy people. And after just 36 hours, there was a significant increase in the autophagy initiation proteins in the fit people compared to the sedentary people. So remember, fasting is good. Intermittent fasting is clearly healthy, as we can see from these, uh, this study. But also exercise helps complement this. You know, like in the movie Forrest Gump, uh, you know, fasting and exercise are like, you know, peas and carrots. They work synergistically. They work together. So I think this is really important. Again, in conclusion, if you want to support autophagy, the pathways linked with longevity, you don't need to do seven-day, five-day fast and, and be very aggressive with that. We know that if your body fat is quite low, when you do these long-duration fasts, the expense linked with that could be catabolism of lean mass. And lean mass loss, as we've talked about in the last several weeks, is actually linked with increased risk for cardiovascular disease. Some people who lose weight quickly actually have an increase in cardiovascular disease because of loss of lean tissue. So I think this is exciting. I think you'll think it's exciting as well. Um, let me know what you think in the comments and I would love to uh, hear from you. So, uh, and also I'll, I'll link this article in the comments below. So please share this article with your friends who are you know, curious about preventing cancer, heart disease, or metabolic health and improving their body composition. We'll catch you in a future episode down the road. Thanks for tuning in. Bye now.